Hello, my name is Dr. Shamos and today we are looking at some more gameplay on Red Purple Law. Now, what I'm presenting to you is what I believe is going to be my perfect decklist into going on OPO7. This decklist is perfect for me. I will try to explain why as quickly as possible. Now, there are, uh, the focus of this deck, the strategy uh, that I'm going for, is more consistency by playing more Queens and playing the Rages, and then playing a stronger card like Ace. So the focus is the Queens and the Ace on this strategy. Uh, and the cards that are missing here is the Beppo and the Promo Law, which are very popular and what are, you are used to see. First of all, why I'm not playing Beppo? Beppo in OPO7, from what I'm seeing, is getting the same value as Ayn or Bonclay. Pretty much. You drop him with your leader effect or normally, and when you drop him on normally, he will always be regenerating uh, one Rested Dawn, you know, no matter how you deploy it. Uh, then you pass turn and every time I do this, they just uh, remove Beppo. In this meta, it's pretty easy to remove a 4 cost or less and Beppo just gets removed. Yes, he's still a 1k counter, but I decide to compensate the lack of Beppo uh, with, again, and there's, this is where the strategy focus more, adding more, one more queen and keeping the 4 rages, obviously. So this will up the consistency of the deck, which lets me cycle out my hand much more and uh, keep my hand size much more healthier, so we can see more Ainz, more Bonclays and more Shashin Penguins, which is uh, my favorite card to ramp up on. Uh, Shashin Penguin, I really like to use them aggressively and I'm not afraid to use them aggressively. So that's the reason why you're not seeing Beppo. And Promo Law, I decided to take him out. I, there was a decklist I played for, and then there was another decklist I played too. I just decided to take him out to play the two Blocker Laws and the two Aces, which is the focus and what I, why I believe this decklist is working for me so well. Uh, Ace is pretty much the same as uh, Promo Law. Promo Law, I will, again, same thing with Beppo. I would drop Promo Law, minus 2k, and then bottom deck someone, and when I pass turn, they would most of the time remove him. He, they did not prioritize Promo Law as much as Beppo, obviously, because his value was already as soon as you bottom deck, but still, people were bottom decking him a lot, and so, I decided to take Promo Law and just play the Ace. Ace is a much stronger uh, card. Uh, I really was trying to squeeze in uh, the ace for a long time and finally I, f I managed to build a decklist that works really well and feels good. So ace, uh, pretty much you sometimes from time to time will play simpler, I'll just give you a really simple example. You go second, you have four down, you play ein, five down, pass turn. Then he, the turn comes back to you, whatever your opponent does, and you'll be at seven down. Because you ramped up that down, you actually accelerated more uh, of the game that you would really expect. You drop the ace, and I'm telling you right now, the 3k that he gives minus, you will be able to bottom deck a body on the field. Because of that little speed up fr uh, from the eye, yes. And then you have a body that is 7k and 7 cost, which is almost non-removal. And if they remove him, I'm telling you right now, they're going to use way too many resources that it's almost not worth it. So yeah, this is why I really like Ace. I was trying to squeeze in the third, but I was taking away an Otama, was only playing one Otama, but I was really missing that extra 2k from time to time. And I decided to uh, just play the two Ace and use him more as a tech card. And then again, again, the focus really is the Queen and the Rages. Just kind of... Uh, use my consistency and use strategies against the different matchups with the many tech cards that I run and just adapt my strategy to survive and to see the cards that I need. Uh, and that this is why this decklist really works for me because I really managed to adapt this decklist to what I need for every matchup and really synergizes with my playstyle. So thank you so much and I'll see you now in the gameplay. Okay, this is the first match. First match is against a Luchi. I was actually uh, one of the decks I was struggling with most was actually Luchi and uh, Bonnie. Um, but this was the first game where I, where not the first game actually, but the first game I remember to record where I actually adapted my strategy for Luchi. I decided to go with just with the 8k. Doesn't really. Like, if I play the Zoro, it doesn't really matter, because he can just remove it. He could have played the other Kako and just remove it. I decided to just play the Kid and make a 6k swing. Just I'm going super aggro. There are two ways to play uh, Red Purple Law, is you try to make small swings and just build an um, insane amount of board, make your uh, opponent swing to your lives, or... 
you you pretty much just go aggro. Um, I with the Luchi, I prefer to go the aggro version. Uh, pretty much, I just decided to go with the strategy I used to use with Red Green Law when it comes to the old uh, Luchi. Um, although this Luchi has more 2k counters, it still works because if I make him use the 2k counters early, that means when I start building a lot of boards, um, I start. I start making swings that will always connect, you know? So as you guys can see, I already have four bodies on the field. He needs to deal with that bond clay, because that bond clay has really good value here. He has eight done, so yeah, if he plays Maria, which I think he will, that's why I played I made priority for bond clay. He needs, like to be honest, he, um, most people need to play uh, eight Maria on curve most of the time against Red Purple Law. Because at this time we have, he did not, he played this, which caught me off guard, but at least I did counter out of the attack um, for the um, for his unplayability to not uh, activate. At this time I didn't know that Isho was starting to become a popular card, so I accidentally dodged <laughs> his, his drop. But yeah, I still believe he should have played Mari if he had. I'm just poking him. I think here I'm gonna leave the kid up. Yeah. Don't know if I should. Yeah, okay. Don't know if I should. Maybe I could have swung here, but still it's not bad because we have at least four swings next turn. With our leader, uh, Kid, Ayn, and Reiju, so yeah. So he needs to swing into board now. So we pretty much just protected our lives. Now I'm super up on lives. He's at six cards in hand, which is not that hard to, to deal with, to be honest, because we can just make bigger swings. And if he doesn't, if he takes the lives, then we are closer to finishing game, which is good. Yeah, I'm just gonna let my, my board go. Does I don't really care. I know many many red purple law players like to leave their at some point all of their characters up. It's just because I'm I have PT, PTSD to be honest. <laughs> uh, pretty much all the time I I just they just have the perfect hand to decrease the 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 cost or power or whatever they need on two characters and then they just take it away. So I decide to adapt to that <laughs> and just go aggro. He does not play the Maria. I was expecting Maria, but I at this point I was like, okay, he doesn't have Maria. He plays the Luchi, that's fine. He can take away my kids, that's not badly played. And I'm at 7, so our boy is coming. I'm just gonna take away Bart. Can make a lot of swings, there you go. He's low on cards in hand. We still have three lives, so still really nice. And we have the um, and we have the, the ace now. The ace to, is, at this point he's just lost. So yeah, on Luchi I prefer to go with the variant of going uh, super aggro, especially with the hand that I had, and I like to go first to make the the eight k swing. Normally, uh, I choose to go uh, now. I choose to go um, uh, first or second, uh, and then on my second turn, I play simple. I, if I'm going second, I try to drop an Ein, get the Dawn, and then just swing with leader for five. And if I'm going first, most of the time I like to attach three Dawn, make it eight, eight K swing. Or if I have Zoro, sometimes I like to swing five, then play Zoro, swing five. He finally drops the Maria, but at this time he's uh, too late. <laughs> I'm gonna heart bottom deck that Rebecca. And then he just gave me Maria where I can uh, just swing with uh, with Bond Clay here. He got Khalifa. Place Bandin, I think that's the name. I don't know what this guy does for the deck, to be honest. 
he did play Luchi, so I guess that's what he does, but he just gives up because he would have just taken away my my Bon Clay, and it's fine because I have the Dawn, you know. I I have the swings, I have four swings, so yeah. Was not bad. Next game is the uh, Bonnie. Now she I did get the um, to choose and I choose to go second against Bonnie. The reason is they always like to play that searcher, which is Bonnie, and if they're playing um, with the Don, Don Flamingo variant, they played the two searchers. And if I let them go second, they most of the time either play one searcher in search, or they play two searchers and pass, which really hurts me. So yeah, I managed to steal their curve plays, what they really like to do. And I really like to play for early game, that's why I steal their, their plays on early game, because... I, I believe with Red Purple Law, I can build much more momentum, much more momentum if I steal their uh, their most optimal combos early game, and then when I start building final, uh, when I start building momentum, I, you know, I just overwhelm them. Now he has a Rouge, I'm like, uh, let me see, he's probably just gonna, yeah, he's gonna rest and then he's gonna let this go. I'm just gonna bottom deck Rouge, and I'm playing Raju. I'm going a little bit lower on Dawn here, just to keep my hand size healthy. Not only that, I was trying to see some more power depletion, um, but with Bonnie, you do need to have a more healthier hand, because pretty much what she does is she rests your characters on board, and you need to play characters on board, whether you like it or not, and then she just goes for Starve, and does, doesn't really... Um, swing for lives and just keep swinging for uh, board most of the time uh, so there's the only way you kind of get cards in hand is with rages and queens so yeah so the strategy where you go a little bit more passive um, just doesn't really work with her so yeah make 5k swing she doesn't have the um, her leader ability which is nice I go a another Rage. We saw two Rages. Two Rages is really nice, and we got Shashin Penguin. So I have guaranteed uh, Don Regen. He plays Cavendish. That's fine. Then swings five into Rage. So he's playing well. He's. Um, uh, by the way, I played here Kid to bait him into resting the Kid. So this, uh, like this, I have my. Hold my uh, four swings. So yeah, he did took the bait. Uh, just to tell you guys that most of the time they will uh, just rest your blockers because you know that's the that's the more logical thing to do. But yeah, he's trying to start me. He's playing well, but I saw two rages, and I'm going aggro here. I could have played Shashin Penguin, but I'm just gonna. Just gonna set up for game. So I have six swings here. Four, um, sorry, five swings because we do know he's gonna rest someone, and then he plays the kid. So this is pretty much a really good demonstration because he's playing really well on the other side. He's adapting to my strategy. We did get lucky with Rachel, but we, you guys can see the uh, my adaptation to the strategy. Here I'm. I think I'm gonna do a small misplay. Yeah. The reason I did this was because uh, I can... And then he misplays his sure song with Bon Clay here too. This was the only bad turn. This is because with Bon Clay I can attach to Dawn, swing into Kid, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'm just gonna bottom deck, not gonna play anything. And now I'm gonna make a big swing because he has no blockers. He's gonna rest one of my blockers. There you go. He needs to let it go. If he protects, then <laughs> he's gonna be way too low uh, cards in hand. And I still have a lot of boards. And now we can make comfortable swings with the rest of our characters. There you go. Just make a 6k swing. He still has Shariah, so it's fine. And just lets it go. He actually didn't have the counter. He had the Jones. 
Next game is another bunny. This is not a rematch. This is another bunny, and I really wanted to you guys to see the this game because it was really interesting. First, he steals the going second. So that already puts us as a at a disadvantage. Um, and I th yeah, I think I started recording this uh, late, but I actually remembered. And I think I did mulligan the hand and got this. I have the rush. Rush is good against Bonnie, so it's not that bad of a hand. We have the ace, and we have Don regen. The only thing missing is more power depletion, but it's fine. We compensate it with the rush and board building with the Don regen. He's taking way too long to think here. <laughs> There's absolutely no reason. Maybe someone... He was doing something else. So yeah, there you go. He lets it go. And now I just make a swing with Zoro. There you go. We got a card out of hand. It's just good value. I think it's the best value we could have had with the hand we, we got. I took care of the... Um, of the searcher. We still made a swing into lives. And uh, I just, I don't like to use my uh, ability early with when I am at 3 dawn on second turn. Some players like to do it and then play Shashin Penguin and go to 2. I prefer to have a little bit more dawn. He makes the swing into Zoro, so Zoro was somewhat of a... Um, of a um, blocker here. Now I'm gonna take this because I'm at 5 done as well. So next turn we have the ace. He's at 6 done. So it's fine. We know that ace is gonna have uh, value. When they are at 6 done, they pretty much only play 5k or 6k bodies. Most of the decks, by the way, not just Bonnie. He swings into life. So he, he did. we did manage to get some hand size. We're just gonna make a swing. He's gonna rest the other body. Yep, I think he's expecting the, the ace, by the way, at this point. I could really well just attach um, Dawn and then just play like a raise max, but I didn't have it. And pretty much he knew I was going to play the ace. Now we have ace once again. And now we have a body that is going to be really, really annoying. He plays Hawkins, our biggest counter in this deck. There you go, now we just swing. Yeah, I do this. I'm gonna bait his uh, rest onto my blocker law. It's just, I could have made the swing first, but he would just probably just discard two cards, so I prefer to do it like this. He takes, we get good value. So yeah. I'm gonna make two 5k swings and then just another uh, 7k. It's fine by me because if he takes the free block then he needs to take the life and we are building momentum by building uh, boards on uh, board. yeah. So I'm just gonna go two, two 5ks. He's probably gonna take the free block here. There you go, just as expected. And then I just make a 7k swing, if he wants he discards 2 cards from hand, if not he takes lives, leaving him at 1. We have 3 lives as well, once again. So yeah. And I'm just gonna play the bond clay because potential, kid, fortress kid, he does play it. We have no power depletion. And he plays a blocker. So yeah. Makes a swing onto our blocker law. Leaves Hawkins up, so he can block anything he needs. I'm just, once again, gonna have to use Bond Clay to deal with this. He's gonna block, obviously. Resting our ace. And then I'm just, I'm just gonna play a Shariah. I'm sweating right now, <laughs> because it's like, uh, it's gonna be really hard to take uh, this kid's fortress away. 
He plays another one. Ah. <sighs> like, oh my god. I'm just, I'm thinking, is there any way where I could, um, where I could deal with this easier, but no. Yeah, I'm gonna protect my Bonclay. The ace one play combo was making good pressure. And then he's gonna attach. There you go. Now, he cannot use his uh, leader ability. I think in this game, I noticed it way too late. Yeah, he blocks. I'm like, okay, uh, I really need to take away one. And I pass. I'm gonna keep my rush in hand. If he swings for bond play now, I, I just need to let it go. Now I'm expecting him to play more blockers. He's ru running low on blockers because we did, uh, we dealt with four, if I'm not mistaken. He could still do, um, he, can, he could still play a lot of blockers depending on his hand. But I am like, he has Hody Jones at some point. Like, he's getting his hands uh, bricked up with the Hody. And he does play the Hody. <laughs> what a nice timing. And here I'm like, okay, I'm just I'm just gonna make a big swing here. Try to make him block with the Hawkins. And then if he blocks with Hawkins, we can he didn't, but we can make just play our key then killer and then attach other three done. And we do, we just make a big swing, make him block with Hawkins. So he has no blockers, he could still uh, play a lot of blockers, but it's fine. We still have three lives, so yeah. <laughs> Swings into Kid and Killer, obviously. He plays the f the. I think this is the third right, the third uh, uh, Kid. I like, oh Jesus! I'm really having to deal with all of this. <laughs> He's gonna play another. Oh, he did not play a blocker. I was expecting him to play another blocker, and me to just having to hard uh, hard bottom deck it. And now, once again, we're gonna have to make this. I should have left some more uh, done. I should have made a 10k swing, but it's fine, it's still fine. He still had to let it go. He makes a swing, I just need to, to let go. If he plays the fourth uh, key, I'm done. <laughs> but he, he, most people only play three. So yeah, finally, we managed to finish the game. Really slow one. Thankfully, those kid and killers we got on the uh, on the beginning was good. Now this I le left this NL for last because I, I actually gonna ask you guys on the, the opinion. Um, so he chose I chose to go second to to kind of to kind of have more done, and I was looking for the iron. I did get the iron just in case. But here I'm just going super rush. In case he gets triggers, it's fine. Uh, triggers that remove boards. So yeah, there you go. He did get a trigger that removes board. It's fine. Zoro got his value. So I'm just playing tree uh, around the triggers by just playing uh, bodies that get uh, instant value. I take the first life. This just for potential Gadatsu. He got a Kikunojo, which is fine. So here I'm deciding to make a 6k swing and then I'm gonna play Ayn. Uh, Ayn will give me a Dawn, then we just bottom deck that Kikunojo because we are 3 lives. So I'm choosing to, to bottom deck Kikunojo, but if he plays anything else, uh, I would probably not bottom deck it. He plays the um, 
curve play on Big Mom. It's fine. Now here I'm gonna make um, risky plays. <laughs> Yeah, so here I am just, I'm gonna build a lot of boards, gonna play another iron, and I pass turn. This is a small misplay, and I'm gonna tell you guys why, because he's at uh, eight, uh, 9 done now, yeah, and I run into Yamato. I should've uh, put his uh, lives to 1, and then pass turn. I, I knew the Yamato was coming, but I forgot... Uh, I forgot that uh, Yamato is uh, your opponent's life and your own, so yeah. But now we did run into the kit and killer. I was already going to go for... I'm gonna try to make as much pressure now as possible. Yeah, I'm just gonna make a lot of swings. And I'm just kinda hoping for not good triggers. That's the best I can do at this point. He did not get the trigger. He takes. Okay, I'm gonna go 7 now. He's gonna take 2 cards from hand. There you go. And now I'm just gonna use my kit. Okay. If he plays another Yamato or Ace Rush, we still have 3 lives. So it's fine. He plays another Yamato, he cannot KO anything. Yamato will take the Kidding Killer, he's probably gonna attach one and swing. I'm gonna protect that just to have more possible swings. We <laughs> we top deck another Kidding Killer, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna win this turn. I make a 5k, just to take one cards from hand, and now I can go uh, 7k. Three 7ks. Which is good, he got the Kikunojo trigger, he pretty much gave up. If he got a badge, I would be... Um, it wouldn't matter because we did top tech uh, Kidding Killer. Now I'm just gonna go 7k. There you go, and now I have 7k, so guarantees my win. There you go. So, what the opinion I wanna... Um, I want to get from you guys is um, I think I played this matchup well I think I kept the right hand I think going second against NL is good because we are stealing his his curve plays and we can still be a lot aggressive I did look for the rush and I did get the zero I think the only misplay here was uh, me not making him at one life on the first Yamato drop but I want to say I got lucky by top decking those two uh, Kid and Killers and I was lucky that he only got pretty much one one good trigger, which was at the very top where he where he just KO'd the Zoro. But I want to get your guys' opinion. If I could have played this differently, if I could have played this better, I don't think I did. I think I pre pretty much played how you you the only way you can play against uh, NL. But I, I I really want to get some someone opi someone's opinion because I do struggle NL. I think that's the idea. I think NL counters uh, red purple law. Uh, it depends too much on the triggers, but yeah, he did not see the ace rush. I think the ace rush would have saved him, by the way, if he, instead of having Yamato, would have the ace rush. So yeah, that's another thing to take into account. Uh, but I don't know, uh, please tell me, you guys, maybe I, I just got lucky, didn't see his best cards, and maybe that's the, the way, you know, you kind of just need to hope for it. With Katakuri, it's easier, because even with triggers, at least he does not return his life for free with his leader ability, so yeah. But we now, I think this is the only way you pretty much play is hope for rush. Uh, you make as many swings as possible. Uh, once you put him at two lives, you leave one turn or you swing into one life, depending on your lives as well. And yeah, and that's it. And you kind of just need to hope for the triggers. I can still play around some by not playing board uh, early. So I don't play board, I swing first. And then I make sure I at least can build board that will stay. So yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I know if you stay till the end of the video, I just want to say thank you. I know there's probably better YouTubers that make better content. Um, but it's really special to me if you stay till the end. Um, and if you do, like and subscribe if you enjoy. And goodbye.